Hello and welcome to Haircut and the Beard. My name is Haircut Vader and I'm joined by my co-host Rob the Beard Brown. What's going on? Rob, your beard is looking wondrously luscious. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, I do more. spend about, I reckon, 20% of my day just grooming it, yeah. looking after it, looking at it in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah, well, likewise. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we have a special guest joining us today. You might remember her from episode one and two. The girl. Hello, haircut and beard. Girl. Nice to be here again. Yes, you are. And you're still a girl. I am. Yes. <laughs> that has not changed. Very true. I think we're getting, we're getting a lot of legs out of that joke. I think it, it needs to stick around. Bring it on. If this is your very first episode that you're listening to, I'll give you a real quick recap. Basically, we talk about TV shows, movies, entertainment, pop culture, all that fun stuff. We start off with some news so we can catch you up and we end out with some fun stuff at the end filled with a delicious sandwich of discussion mm, in the centre. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> so today we'll be discussing the political thriller House of Cards which is based on the, uh, the BBC original series. A lot of people don't know that. Just yeah. for the record. It stars the always awesome Kevin Spacey. We are talking specifically about season three it's we we are going to spoil stuff without a doubt. If yeah. you haven't seen it, we will we will talk very generally, and we will let you know before we do any major spoilers. Spoilers, but if you haven't seen at least the first couple of episodes, I'd uh, I'd probably at least catch up. I mean, what are you doing? It's been out for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, well, hello. Give it the times. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. But first, as always, uh, we'd like to talk about some news. Okay. Well, we have some news. I've got some really uh, some fun stuff that I uncovered this week. Well, not really uncovered, just what kind of went on Reddit. First up, we got some news. Um, the latest trailer for the Avengers: Age of Ultron came out. You probably saw it. Yeah, it was released. Can't wait. This is the latest in the Marvel franchise, and written by the same dude as the other one, Josh Whedon. <laughs> Do you want to nope. try that again? <laughs> Josh Whedon. What? Not Josh. It's oh. just Whedon, guys. Is it? Why am I the only one who knows this? I love that I correct him in the most <laughs> condescending tone that I was wrong to. Joss Whedon. <laughs> yes. I is think it, that was right. Yeah. Is it? Is not Whedon? Whedon. Joss Whedon. Is it Whedon? <laughs> I think I think it's uh, Josh Whedon. <laughs> yeah. Let's leave that one. Joss Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first movie uh, broke the record for the... Biggest opening weekend of any film in the US, two hundred seven million, yeah. and uh, it's currently fourth biggest worldwide release. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, did absolutely. You see the trailer? I, I did. I, I can't wait. I, see, I'm one of those people. Everyone says that uh, you know, like a true film buff should only watch gritty black and white French films that have subtitles, and it's just a woman yeah. eating an egg for three hours, <laughs> and something like that. I, I love comic book films. Like, I, I do like women eating eggs, and, and you know, that, that does uh, get me excited. But at the same time, I... I excited. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> at the same time, I do really enjoy watching, like, these, you know, big popcorn films, you know? Girl, Blockbusters. is the world addicted to superhero movies? Uh, the type of people who go to the movies do enjoy that variety of film. Actually, f fun sub-fact that I found out um, was that there's a, there's a bunch of theatres in America that are actually showing 30-hour movie marathons of oh, all the Marvel yeah. movies prior to screening that film. I thought that was incredible. Wow. If, I couldn't be up for that long. If I, <clears throat> if I could do it, I would do it. Yeah. But I could like because I love all of those films. I'm I'm deeply addicted to comic book films, and I will openly say I will watch every one of them that comes out. Yeah, but not uh, consecutively. No, no, God no. no. It'd be a good movie marathon at home if you could go and do stuff in between yeah, and all that take kind of eight stuff. Eight-hour sleep yeah. breaks. Yeah, yeah, no every shit. Every ten no hours. Shit. Another um, another trailer was also released for the Mad Max reboot, Fury Road. Oh, so good. Now George Miller was the writer and director, of course, of the first one. Mm. He's also writing and directing the, the reboot. Yeah, yeah. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? 35 years later. Well, that was also done uh, with Sam Raimi and the, what was it, the Evil Dead film? Oh, no joke. And that was brilliant. Like, I, I loved that film. It was great. And I, I believe if anyone's going to redo it, what's wrong with the original guy doing it? You know? He knows they, best. Yeah, they know best. He's going to treat it with respect. There's nothing worse than something being rebooted and they just take a giant sting shit all over the original. You know, so <laughs> I'm all for it. it. You guys have seen these trailers, yeah? Yeah. They look like masterpieces. Like, 
Yeah. Um, the visually, the, the, the music, everything was... Brilliant. I'm going to say, I mean, Age of Ultron is going to be just... It's going to be a blockbuster. Uh, Fury Road, I'm still on the fence on. I'll have to really? see. Yeah. Have you seen the originals? You can tell from a trailer sometimes, sometimes you can't. Yeah, fair call. One interesting thing on that, apparently... Because uh, the first film, uh, the first films back in the day, the Mel Gibson ones... They didn't have any special effects. Oh, sorry, they didn't have any digital effects back in the day. Yeah. This one has very, very limited digital effects for all of the the car stuff. So when you see like two cars colliding, they're colliding. Yeah. Um, which when you see the trailer is amazing, absolutely amazing yeah. because it's a big, grand, like set piece kind of film. You know. Yeah. Leonard Nimoy uh, passed away at eighty three due to complications uh, from lung disease. That's extremely sad. I mean. He, he had a, uh, a long life, he had a good life, and, uh, you know, he, he touched a lot of people with his work, and it's it's tragic. Uh, but at the same time, I think he's uh, he'll be missed. You know? Yes, very true. You know, he had a film career spanning over 60 years. Yes. Yeah, quite the legacy. Yeah, that's it phenomenal. Is, it actually is, of course, most recognised for Spock. Um, there was tributes everywhere from Celeb. Yeah. yeah. I, I, oh, you know what, he actually, his final tweet was one of the most... Um, touching things ever. Like, yeah, you know he, sh- he shared some poetry. Um, yeah, I find I find this really beautiful. His last tweet. I, I don't know if he knew that he was sort of uh, you know soon to go, but a life is like a garden. Perfect moments can be had, but not preserved except in memory. I think that's really beautiful. Uh, speaking of celebs almost dying slash dying, that was a bad segue. <laughs> uh. I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> Harrison Ford survived a plane crash by. Attempted to land in a golf course in California. Really? I mean, this is the guy that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. If anyone can <laughs> land that plane, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that one. Go on, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time. Uh, For the record, the girl has never seen Star Wars, so. Uh, you holy know, crap. Yeah. Yeah, we'll make that happen. <laughs> Blow stairs all around. Yep. The first look, um, Pigs came out um, of Joseph Gordon Levitt in an upcoming film, Snowden, about the infamous whistleblower. Edward Snowden. Is Joseph Gordon-Levitt a good actor? Yeah, I think so. You know what? At the very least, he's a cool guy. Like he, he... I, I wasn't quite sure, and so I googled it. <laughs> and what does Google wait, say? Wait, did you Google? Is he a good actor? Yeah, is Gordon-Levitt a good actor? I googled it, and it turns out he is. <laughs> <laughs> so did Google just have like just one big block letters? Yes. No, it did. It, <laughs> but it did take me to the IMDb page where Inception, Dark Knight Rises, Five Hundred Days of Summer, Fifty yeah. Fifty, all amazing films. Yeah, that he was exceptional. Yeah, I agree. I, I think he's a great actor. And you know what? He's really charming. Yeah, and... he's a cool like like. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Robot sounds coming from the girl. <laughs> Brilliant. He's uh, a likable guy. He yeah. really is. He really is. I want to be with him. You know, he yeah. wears glasses as well too. He does. He yeah. does. That, that's very important, I think. I uh, put up this week a uh, clip on Twitter, if you caught it, of Michael Bay playing a frat boy in the 1999 film Mystery Men. Did you oh, you're kidding. It? No. Oh, it's so funny. He, um, if you didn't catch it, check it out. He's rumoured to be the director of the upcoming film Bad Boys 3. Rumoured. There's just some buzz building about it. Wow. There's just some buzz building. So, I mean... <laughs> Going back to the whole popcorn um, film thing, I hate everything Michael Bay stands for, but I'll go watch his films. Yeah, I love Bad Boys. I think they're, they're great films, and, and Mike Lowry and all that stuff, it, it, they're fun. Bad yeah. Boys 3 has been building a little bit of buzz. A little bit of buzz, brilliant. So when you say it's building buzz, <laughs> well, what exactly do you mean? It's getting a little bit of buzz. Like, there's been some talk about it on the net, the net world. You know, speaking about <laughs> the net world and, and uh, you know, buzz and all that kind of fun stuff, you know, we talked last week about Neil Blomkamp and, and the whole, uh, you know, him doing a, a sort of a sequel to Aliens and all that kind of stuff. Really, really exciting stuff. Um, apparently, the way that he got that made was, or the, the way he got that greenlit was, he went out and made all of these, uh, you know, cool screenshots and all this kind of stuff. And then sort of leaked it on the web, and when everyone sort of ran with it and said, "Oh, that's that's awesome," you know, that sounds really exciting. Um, he then approached the the uh, he he approached Ridley Scott and said, "Ridley Scott approached him." I can't remember the specifics, but basically they talked, and that's how it, it, it ended up happening. So yeah. basically, he created a rumor that he wanted to come true, and because of of the amount of buzz behind it, got his way. Self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really really cool way to use the web and and just get involved. He's a cool guy. I, I'm really excited for this. Apparently, it's going to be made around the the time 
um, shortly after Aliens, which is interesting because we already have a sequel to Aliens. Yeah. So, so I don't like know a where it's a small window of time. Yeah. It's just going to slip in. Exactly. And there's a direct timeline between Aliens and Alien 3. And, like, and by that I mean, we know exactly what happened in between it. So I, I don't know where this is going to fit. Yeah. I don't know if this is going to cause the other films to not be canon anymore. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm excited. I think it's really cool. So today we're going to be talking about Season 3 House of Cards. Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. At his best. I actually went back and watched the first two seasons just to sort of warm up to this because it, it had been about a year since I'd seen it. I love the fact that they actually release everything. Just bang, it's all there. Go nuts. You know, enjoy. Yeah. In, uh, and I think that that's a really good way of doing things. I think we're going to find over the next like 10 years that's going to become more and more common. It totally caters to the binge watching. Yeah, us. yeah, exactly. I mean... I don't watch normal TV at all anymore. Don't do it. And for me, this is perfect. I can watch it at my own leisure when I want. I think the opposite will happen, man. I think they're going to, like, instead of having 12 or 13 episodes come out in one hit, I think mm. they're going to split it six and six over the year. Yeah. Keeps the buzz alive more. Having it, I, dude, I've, I've literally consumed it in a week. So and I, I have to, yeah. like, wait a whole year for another <laughs> consumption. And that's horrible. It's very difficult. It is horrible. You know what? I, I never thought of that, but I think that's actually a really good idea. I think that that's a better way of doing it. It keeps people engaged. And going back to the actual show itself, I, I think that shows like this and Breaking Bad and, and I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, true detectives, things like that. I think that's proof that we are in a, a golden age of television. Screw yeah. this, you know, like back in the 50s or whenever the fuck it was, and everyone's like, oh, golden age of television. This is the time when uh, TV isn't like a, a lesser version of what you'd see when you go to the movies. The yeah. quality, the acting, the performances, the, the, the overall quality of what we're seeing these days on television is as good as what you'll find in, in it. It's like the Roaring Twenties, but for TV. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's really a good time to live. We might look back on this time and go, fuck, what, did it get better? <laughs> Did it get worse? <laughs> I hope it gets better. I hope it gets better too. But I, you know what? I'm happy with shows. Shows like the ones that I just mentioned. If this is the quality that we've, you know, we can expect from here on out, brilliant. Bring it on. It, now, it's just awesome. Now, season three, it's uh, focuses a little bit more on Frank's battle with the office of the presidency. Yeah, it's not him fighting for it so much. It, exactly. It was a bit. A bit more, uh, in the past it was he had a clear goal, uh, uh, Frank needs to get this goal and he would do anything to get to it. Yeah. I felt we really saw a lot more of uh, his vulnerability this time. Yeah, He was a lot less uh, on top of everything and there was a lot, uh, a lot more times where you really saw the cracks starting to show. And it was something we hadn't really seen in the previous episode, uh, season. Would you guys agree yeah. with that? No, very true, very true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's really been taken down a few pegs. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Now, did, was that a good thing for you guys or a bad thing? It kind of allowed, like, the whole season really focuses on Doug quite a bit. It allowed for different characters to kind of spring up and be explored a little bit more. Yeah. Um, less so of him. Yeah. You know, like, this guy is, like, obviously the most morally corrupt yeah, politician yeah. ever. Shown like, from the very, sorry, yeah. the, the opening scene where he proceeds to, for those that haven't seen cop it, but... He proceeds to, to piss on his father's grave. Like, like he's, he's very morally corrupt, but when he talks about uh, Amworks, it's like he suddenly is genuine about it, but I don't buy it. Like, I, I, think that he's, I think there's a sinister reason why he wants that to go through, yeah. but that hasn't been revealed. I, no, I, it's see, to I, benefit his campaign when he runs? Yeah. I've seen the full... Yeah, no, to oh. benefit his campaign, but obviously, like, if you're if if you run a campaign and become the president of the United States, at that point you can fulfill your goal See, of like passing whatever legislation you want or yeah. running the country however you want. Amworks is his way of, you know, his legacy. But yeah. why? That's the question for me that wasn't answered the whole season. So my my theory with that is, and and I'm pretty confident this is the case. Is think about it. He hasn't got any children. He, he, his only goal in life is strength, power, and his legacy. My theory is that this is his legacy. He, yeah. he, uh, the reason he wants to get to this is one, uh, because it does benefit his, his career and uh, you know, his ability to, to get re-elected uh, soon, but it also is something that he can leave behind. So you, you think he's genuine? 
I, okay, I think he's genuine, but not because it benefits the people. Yeah, in the self-serving goal. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, like, there's been no evidence in anywhere through the whole series that he has any any um, legitimate care for anyone except for Claire. And even that is a it little wavers, bit... It wavers, doesn't it? It, it yeah. really does. He's not a compassionate character. Not at all. And I love him. I really do. For me, going back to what I asked you earlier, if it works for you or not, uh, for me... This season didn't work in the same way the previous two did. Yeah. I, it's like if you go and see a Jackie Chan movie and he kicks ass through the whole movie. Yeah. You don't want to see him in a fucking wheelchair, uh, you know, rolling down the street going, oh, my, my, my back hurts. Because that's not the Jackie you know. Exactly. And this wasn't the Frank that I know, you know. Because <laughs> yeah. um, I know him well. No, but it, for me, this this season didn't, didn't cut it like the other ones did because of, he wasn't in control. Yeah. Every time, like they they hinted that he had this master plan that he was he had in works, but then something would go wrong every time. So many different forces were undermining him. People were manipulating the yeah. situations. Yeah, and he just he never felt like he was in control. And I think they were trying to show this whole thing of, you know, he destroyed the president before him, and you could see a lot of the things that that he'd done to the president before him were happening to him and, and his wife. Sort of you know, cyclical, yeah. like yeah. Things that happen to him. It's doesn't really matter who's in that position. There's yeah. always going to be people challenging and coming up from below. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I mean, I feel it, it's it's good and, you know, it makes sense and I get the, the general themes of the season, but I didn't enjoy it as much. I, I truly didn't. I, it was... It's different. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely different. I don't like change. But I think <laughs> that season, season three of a lot of different TV shows, they have difficulty making it really good. You know, yeah. They have a lot of... The, uh, good TV shows that start to fail around season Very three. true. There's many examples. Very true. Um, Lie to Me is one that springs up to mind. One yeah. and two were pretty good. Like, I yeah. enjoyed them, but season three was just so woeful. Walking yeah. Dead lost me at season three. There yeah, you go. yeah that was definitely one of the worst ones. Yeah. Certainly didn't and lose we're, me, but yeah. Ironically, we were in episode three and we've never been better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one thing I wanted to, like, bring up that wasn't quite answered for me Yeah. is, is this there's a lot of... Not really, not really spoiler stuff. Okay. There's a lot of symbolism. Oh, in, yeah. Oh, and this is, Yeah. <laughs> of, yeah um, there's a lot of symbolism of the egg. Mm, the black egg. The, the black wife. egg? Yeah. She doesn't like it. He keeps it in his drawer. Yeah. Mm. There's also, like, some other moments, like... So, the sorry, egg. just going back to the egg, what, what do you feel the symbolism was with the egg? I don't know what the symbolism was. That that's what I'm saying wasn't quite answered for me. Oh, okay. So maybe yeah, it's yeah. something to do with, you know, the, the coming on of menopause. I read somewhere that that could have been something. Oh, because wow. she, yeah, cause, that's Because at one point, she's looking at the eggs, and the very next scene is her frying eggs. Yeah. It's like her eggs yeah. are fried. She's done. No. Oh. Hold on. I could, just remember... Or, or it could be that she's pregnant, or it could be that... Oh, I took else. that as... Yeah, sorry. Can we just take a back step for a second? I just totally forgot about that. I took that scene as her being pregnant because she throws up for no reason yeah. after they'd have had sex, I think, the previous episode. She throws up and then they show the eggs in the pan. I took that as her being pregnant, but then they that was reasonably they, early in the seat. The, they didn't answer... This is what I'm saying. They didn't answer these questions. Progress. Yeah. And there's another... Oh, there's, sorry, we're kind of ruining it for Jules, but... <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, Save kind of ruining it for me because I just really had a piece that I wanted to say. Sorry, no, no, no. go back to that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, with the eggs, obviously the frying, uh, yeah. the eggs could be fried, whatever. It's, it's not quite answered. It's not quite understood. Yeah, there's another bit where like he he has a cigarette, and then the very next scene he's on stage and he coughs. Mm. He coughs really loudly before a speech, and then very next scene it cuts. The very first picture you see of the next scene is in Jackie's husband, the doctor, mm. is showing an X-ray of like a lung. Mm, I'm okay. just like there again, like coughing lung. There's something yeah. there, but it's not quite answered. It's not quite um, made out. That's that's, that's really interesting. I, I I never actually thought of that. Yeah. See, I I was under the impression that the going back to the egg scene, I was under the impression that that meant because they had sex the previous episode or, or earlier in that, yeah. that episode. I was under the impression that. Uh, that was morning sickness, she was ill. Yeah, at the time I thought that as well. But then it was never mentioned. But it could have been simply just bringing back themes of the, of course, the diary um, about when she lied on TV about having an abortion. Yeah, it, yeah. It could be just the themes of that coming back later. Uh, Very true. Because we did see it make a reoccurrence. See, I thought it was a totally different symbolic... Um, what did you think of it? Yeah, what did you well, take from it? Are you referring to the scene when he was sort of really distraught and crying and then she... 
she jumps on and yeah. jumps on no, the, the next episode, I think. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, there was oh. a scene where she threw up in the sink, and then uh, he's like, "Oh, what's wrong?" And she's like, "No, nothing," or, or something along those lines. There's a lot of kind of symbolism surrounding black and white as well. There's she you know she literally makes physical choices between a black dress and a white dress. There's mm. of course the hair color, the black hair or the blonde yeah. hair, which is the white. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, if you if you just looked at just purely the colors of some scenes, it's very black. Yeah. Very white. That's interesting. I yeah I didn't really pick that up. Do you think that's, that's a comment on good and evil or I think so. Black I mean, white meaning like very decisive, obvious. Choices. Yeah, yeah. One one other example I'm thinking of now is whenever she goes for a run, when she's pissed off, mm. she goes for a run. Yeah, she's always wearing pitch black. True. She's she always is. wearing pitch black when she goes running. Uh, it must have something to do with uh, Frank's hold on her, or mm. you know what she's holding on to about the evils they've done to get to where they are. Yeah. It's yeah. I, again, it wasn't quite answered. I don't, don't quite understand it, but maybe a, a second watch will reveal those. Yeah. Things to her. So, I mean, I would like to also discuss, I mean, if you, if you haven't seen any of it at all, this is a, a huge spoiler, but Doug's back. He wasn't dead. How did you guys feel? Before we go any further, how did you feel about the fact that Doug is not dead? The whole first episode was him. Yeah, yeah. Literally, there was very, very little anyone else. It was, it was, it was House of Doug. All, House of Doug, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the, maybe there was some uproar after the second one. No, you can't kill him. The fans yeah. just united and went, no, we're not allowing this to happen. <laughs> and they just brought him back. But, I mean, I don't know. Do you think that was planned? Yeah, I mean, I read an interview with the, the creator, head writer, that said, no, 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 we planned it from the get-go. But yeah. they made it, like, in my eyes, there was no doubt that he was dead. No, he um, was definitely dead. Yeah, so I, I, I'm unsure about that, but he was such a huge thread through the last season that I can't imagine that they didn't know they were going in that direction. You know, yeah. I did feel instantly like it was a bit of a cop out. Um, the whole Doug not being dead because I, I was just so sure he was. Yeah, considering how many characters they killed off in previous seasons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. That said, I love Doug. He's yeah. one of my favourite characters in the whole series and I I don't want him to be dead. Yeah. He, he as well, was very, uh, very different character in this season. Um, yeah. He obviously was going through rehab and he was trying to get his life together and... Um, at the same time, the only thing that had given him meaning up until this point, which was his his work with the president, was taken away from him. Yeah. Um, and one of the one of the scenes that I absolutely loved was him slipping in the shower and destroying his arm. Um, yeah. That was ah, shit. Yeah. Brutal. But the fact that instead of going to the hospital, he knew that you don't miss an appointment with the the president, no, especially on no. threats. Um, no. So he tapes his arm up, tracks in there. And it's not mentioned. Now, that, that, that's ballsy as fuck, but for me, that goes that plays into the whole, the only thing that gives this guy's life meaning is his job with the president. And you can see, almost like it's a, a set of scales, the less that he's working and uh, a part of the, the presidency and, and Frank's life the more the rest of his life just spirals out of control, mm. you know. The more he falls apart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the, then as he slowly gets back in with the uh, the president, uh, he can then control his alco alcoholism and all that kind of stuff. On that, just the, the whole having a shot of bourbon in a syringe, <laughs> my theory on that one, and please tell me what you guys think, I think that was his way of justifying... No, 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 this is my medicine. You know, like, it's, yeah. it, I'm, not, I'm not an alcoholic, I'm not getting drunk, I'm having my medicine, you know? Yeah. And he didn't give it to himself either. Yeah, it was administered by... Administer it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then there was the whole thing, sort of going into my previous theory, that when he, uh, initially, he was actually going to make up his, his shot, you know, he, he put the syringe in and he was ready to go, and then the, uh, the, the, I can't remember what the guy's name is, the... What's that guy's name? Yeah, I don't know. He, I don't really like him. He's a bit of a dick. But it's not Meacham. It's the other guy no. with the pointy ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah pointy ears guy. Um, yeah. Spock. <laughs> anyway, so he comes over and, and instantly he uh, he puts the, the alcohol away and because he's back in, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I th I thought I, I was so happy at the end when he came back into the fold. You know, yeah. for me that was really really good. I wasn't quite sure where he sat a lot of the time because I thought his 
motives were genuine with um, yeah. the other lady that was running for president. Same. And you know what? One thing that I'm really shattered about is I truly thought that the direction that they were going by about episode three was it was going to be Frank uh, versus uh, Doug. Doug and oh. the yeah and the hacker guy who I really, really like. I can't remember his name either. But uh, I was thinking... Too that many characters. There is. There is a lot of characters. But I, I was thinking it was going to be those two working to bring down the president because I thought that Doug was going to find out that Rachel had been killed by the president. Yeah. Um, and he was going to... Uh, he was going to be the big bad guy for this season. Mm. Yeah. And I thought that would have been a fucking awesome storyline. But it never yeah. happened. Would have been cool. Yeah. I mean, look, that, that pretty much wraps up House of Cards. By all means, email us, uh, tweet at us. You know, tweeted? 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 Tweeted us? Tweeted us. Tweeted us. Oh, tweeted us. Why not? Tweeted us. Oh, tweet us. Oh, tweet us. Oh, 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 yeah. Just go tweet us. Yeah. yeah Isn't that what I said? Tweeted us? <laughs> Actually, that would be... No, you're saying tweet at us. I know. That would be a good nickname. My name's Tweet us. Oh, my name's Tweet us. It's very close to Cletus. Yeah, exactly. But it's Tweet us. Uh, you can just approach us on the street and say, hey, what's up? You'll and, recognise him. Yeah, you, the guy with the beard. Yeah, but uh, next week, we didn't want to go into too many spoilers and all that kind of stuff, so next week we will uh, go into a bit more detail and we'll do a quick two or three minute spoiler cast because I really want to hear some thoughts on what you guys think next season will be about. As you guys know, I'm a, a bit of an avid writer. Avid? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, uh, how, do you, uh, how do you... I'll no, leave that. No. Um, <laughs> well, 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 leave how much writing I've done out of it. <laughs> now, last week I pitched a couple of movie ideas, and um, admittedly they weren't great. One did get greenlit. Yep. That was Crocs. Yep. Um, Love it. But this week I've actually got some good ones. Crocs actually in pre-production? Like, we, we joke Starting around a lot, but Jerry it's actually Pippen, Apparently. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He's going to play the lead Croc. Yeah. yeah, who's it directed by? <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> actually, we've got David Fincher attached. Ah, uh, oh, sweet. Yeah. Really exciting. This week, I, I actually have good ones. Okay. I'm not kidding. These, I'm looking forward to this. I, I, I think you'll actually like them. All right, so, are you ready? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you produce the hat on, because it's about to get ripped. <laughs> Excited. Um, okay, so th- my first pitch. Um, a sailor takes a sleeping pill and wakes up on a submarine, and all of his crew have aged 25 years, yet he is still young. I, well, okay, usually I come into these thinking, how can I tear this to shreds? That's kind of an interesting concept. Yeah, I find anything where time's passed for everyone except your protagonist is going to be an interesting mystery yeah, to yeah. unfold, especially when there's a bunch of semen around. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and welcome to the podcast. That was brilliant. Well, let's do it. I'll note that down for next time because there's just going to be three time-related films. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know so what? Greenlit. Really done. Greenlit. Done. done. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's Obviously, after I told you they were good. The Jeremy... Uh, I told Jeremy you. And, I told you! I can do it, man! Right, next Don't one. Don't celebrate too soon. It's yeah, too you've rest. still apparently got two more, and I'm sure they can't live up to the hype of that trust, first one. Trust what me. What was the first one going to be called, by the way? Um, semen. Time semen. <laughs> <laughs> A sailor's semen. Time heals all semen. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Go right, ahead. pitch two. A bean farmer okay. comes across a chicken that literally... Lays golden eggs. Okay. We can call it Cluck and the Bean Squawk. <laughs> uh, for the record, I want everyone at home to know the look on this guy's face. He's so <laughs> proud of that one. Uh, yeah. I don't even want to validate that one with a comment. Yeah, the girl on the other hand doesn't know what to The thought impressed. process is so clear. Uh, no. Came up with puns. <laughs> <laughs> to see, you know, what could that be about? <laughs> the sad thing is that's yeah. not how it went. I actually thought of it. What came first, the pun or the story? The chicken. Or the golden egg. <laughs> um, really? Okay, that one was a bit of fun. This one's legit. Okay. Um, so you know how they've made B-movie, they've made Toy Story, they've made Shark Tale. Yes. So yeah. sort of and they're kind. making Crocs. Yeah, they're making Crocs. Yeah. Yeah. Showing you. Now comes a story about fire. Okay. Two flames meet... Um, Dating website, whatever. <laughs> Tinder by chance? Yeah. <laughs> also, you could call it Tinder. 
Really? Okay. Okay. So let's let's talk I've about logistics other, here. I've got some other names, potential names. Okay. Go, go with the, the names, and then we'll tear it to shreds. Um, so it's about two flames that meet. On yep. the dating website. Obviously, Tinder's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tinder could be another one as well because they're burning on wood. Yeah. Yeah. I like this. Burning love could work better. Burning Love, yeah. Sounds like a movie about an STD. It's actually the name of a show. It's is the it? the name of a parody of a dating show. I highly really? recommend it. Okay. It's you really can... funny. Oh. I think Ken Marino is in oh, it. Oh, I love that one, actually. You showed me that yeah. one before. There you go. You can, you can just call it Heat. Okay. Yeah. And you can actually have Al Pacino come <laughs> into the fold somehow. <laughs> I actually watched Heat yesterday. There you go. Side note. So, let's talk about the logistics here. Uh, how does fire... Use a computer first. Mm-hmm. How does a shark use a computer? Yeah. You can't. You can't. You gotta. If you're gonna allow those films to exist, you need to open up your imagination for flame. You remember Be- Beauty and the Beast? There's a candle that talks. Yeah, but there's a line. There's yeah, a line see. between a, a, a talking candle. Oh. There's a line between a shark that uh, is a gangster and a piece of fire that's using a computer. <laughs> and I think. A piece of fire. There you go. A, How do you... A piece of fire. That's actually what I had written down. Is piece it? Of, piece there of flame. Go. A piece there of fire. Go. How do flames express emotion? You could also call it flame ingos. I don't, I don't know how they express emotion. Oh, 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 so if you're telling a love story of which the basis is emotion... They can get hotter. Okay. So... They get a little blue blueness in them when they're feeling love. That's oh, so that's kind of adorable. <laughs> So, Rob, the beard, brown. What's the best thing ever? So, the best thing ever this week, I mean, the best thing ever, ever, (laughs) is a film called King of Kong. King of Kong. King of Kong. Not not King of Kong. Not King Kong. King of Kong. Now, it's a documentary about, take a guess. Uh, Video games. There you go. I'm doing the nose thing. The, like she knows. Ah. So, it's a film... I do know. I've seen it. Have oh, you actually <laughs> seen yeah, it? Yeah, I have, but a long time ago, so I won't be able to bond with you. Is it not the best thing ever? Nah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <Should I? laughs> I'm sure I enjoyed it at the time, but it's been a while. Already. Yeah. So, I mean, this is right in my wheelhouse. I'm a bit of a geek, bit of a nerd. I do like my video games, as we all know. So, this film is about the world championship of... Uh, Donkey Kong, yeah, uh, a very old retro game, and the uh, the first introduction of Mario, the, that's uh, you know probably the, the most recognisable video game character ever, um, beyond Lara's boobs from Tomb Raider. So basically, this film is just about uh, uh, two guys that are that are competing for this world record. It's so got a basi- top score, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's two guys that are that are competing for the world record in Donkey Kong. And basically, these guys take this shit really seriously. So, one guy has had the record for 20, 30 years, and there's a guy that's sort of the new kid on the block that, that's trying to go for the record. And we're sort of following mainly the guy, the new kid on the block, trying to trying to get to this record. Where it gets interesting is, the record's existed for a very long time, and uh, what happens is that the guy sets up a uh, Donkey Kong machine in his, in his uh, garage and just goes to town, starts, uh, you know, plotting away and getting a really, really good score. Very competitive guy, but a really likeable guy. You know, you're really sort of rooting for him through this film. Now, what happens is he, on, on camera, beats the record. Amazing. Like, phenomenal how how uh, well he does at this game. Like, ridiculous amount of hand-eye coordination, all this kind of stuff. It's really, really interesting stuff. Anyway, he sends the tape in for uh, verification. There's a guy that literally sits there and watches hundreds of hours of all these retro games so that they can be the official keepers of the score. They watch the, the clip. All of a sudden, all these people rock up at his house, all like shady, men in black style, and start taking apart his video game cabinet to try to, to uh, basically try to see if, the, if it's real, if the score's real. Really? They can't find any fault with it, but they still say, no, because you weren't here in the, you know, you weren't um, under, you weren't supervised when doing it, the score can't work. Right, we can't allow this score to be, even though it is the world record. Right, this is a true story. True story. Right, right. you need to watch it. It's, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't been paying attention, so what happens is they they then have this yearly competition where they all come together and, and fight for the championship. So he's like, well, fuck it, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to fight for this this championship spot. 
He goes in there, breaks the world record, right? So it's the second time he's broken the world record. Gets an even higher score than his initial one. While he's uh, while this is happening, the original guy that uh, did the uh, the initial score, who is kind of the bad guy in this film, sends in a tape, right? That they then play that beat the that beat the score that he just got. Yeah, they allow it. So, yeah, double standards, because he's quite close with all the people that, that did this. Mm. And uh, well, I'm not going to spoil the movie for you, but watch it. It is a great film. Really, really interesting. I've got to say, though, some of the nerds in it are... Delightful. Delightful isn't the word that I'd use. <laughs> they are the... Is it actual uh, documentary? Yeah, yes. legit documentary. I Have think I've recommended it to you before. Yeah. It's actually really, like, it is legitimately quite interesting. Um, I've, got a, I've got a quick runner-up. For best thing of the week, this will only be a quick one. one. No, 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 no. This is more of a best thing of the week, not a best thing ever. But I think it's worth a mention. You guys might have actually seen this. Do you have you ever heard of a, a little show called Modern Family? No. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> 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 anyway, so Modern Family did. You know, sometimes they do these weird, like one-off episodes that they they twist it up. Like you've got the bottle episode where it's like entirely, you know, the whole cast is locked in a room together, or you've got the. Uh, uh, I don't know, you've got different episodes where they yep. go on vacation or you've got a wedding episode or that kind of stuff. Yeah. They did a full episode that was done uh, watching someone's computer. Yep. So it was uh, Claire, the mum, uh, on her computer and the whole thing is done through her FaceTiming people, messaging people, going on different websites and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, oh, it's like a concept episode. Yeah, concept episode. And, uh, concept a, episode. and a 20, 21 minute advert for freaking iTunes. I mean, sorry, for, for Apple. Well, that clearly failed then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, honestly, it was really well done. Like there was, you know, there was bits where she'd be FaceTiming with one person and then someone else would, uh, would pop up and she'd minimise this window. The way it was shot was really, really uh, yeah. well yeah. done. But it was interesting because uh, she'd be talking away and someone would ask her a question and you'd see her Google the, the question. Like, it was very similar. Like, most people do that kind of stuff. Yeah, like, act like she just knew it off the top of yeah, her head. Yeah, yeah. But it was... Uh, that show's always... Like, the writers for that show, I think, are really, really clever. And they, they managed to do a full episode like this. And that's really, really, really clever. Yeah. Definitely worth a watch. Mm. Yeah. That's do it. you reckon there's product placement in House of Cards? <laughs> the, some of the worst product placement I've ever seen in my yeah, life. No yeah. shit, definitely Apple. Yeah, obviously. yeah. But and what else? They, they did. Uh, there's an amazing video game uh, called Monument Valley. Yeah, um, he, that was he yeah, loves it. a key a key point in yeah. this in this thing. Yeah, there was another one. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but there was one that was really horrible, like just really shitty. Kind of takes you out of the show a little bit. You know? Yeah, you mean takes you out like when Frank addresses the camera? No, I see. I'm okay with that. I, I, I kind of like. Do you not like that? You know, it what just makes me cringe every time. Really? I just don't buy it. It just breaks that. What is it? Third, fourth wall. Fourth wall. Oh, yeah. Fourth. Yeah. I can't. I, I took me a while to get used to it, though. I get it. I don't like, think I'll ever adjust to it. Initially, really? I was like, "Fuck that." I've never really had a problem with it. Oh. Do you know why they're called the fourth wall? It's no. to do with theater. Yeah, it's because like uh, in in theater, the the you've got you know the three walls and the fourth wall is the audience. Obviously, that yeah, the audience. So breaking the fourth wall is uh, integrating with the audience. Yeah, like yeah. Birdman coming through the Birdman. Egg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I I always like it when films do like a little nod to the fourth wall or like you know breaking the wall. I got a quick story, guys. That I that you know. I think it's kind of interesting, kind of funny. So, on the... Uh, you guys might have heard of this film called Birdman. Uh, you know... Uh, Dude, I we did a shot. So, uh, we, we've all heard of uh, Birdman, Harvey Birdman. On the set of Birdman, there's a scene where he's running through Times Square. You remember the scene? Yeah. And he's, he's wearing his boxes, he's running through, you know, really pivotal point in the film. Apparently, what, one of the producers or someone uh, saw... Uh, someone in the audience, in the crowd, that had a Beetlejuice tattoo, right? A, like a really big, like, full arm piece or something like that with yeah. Beetlejuice on it. Really, really cool. And he's like, oh, shit, I'll, I'll bring Michael Keaton over, who obviously played Beetlejuice, one of his, like, most important roles. Brought him over and he's like, um, mate, I want you to come, at, like, to the, uh, to the guy with the tattoo. I want you to meet someone. Uh, you know, you'll get a real kick out of this. Come over. The guy walks over, sees, uh, you know, sees Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton's like, wow, that's a, that's an awesome tattoo, man. Like, that's really, really cool. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's Beetlejuice. 
<laughs> didn't even know. He had no idea. It was totally idea. wasted on him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's tragic. So they they didn't they didn't mention anything to him. <laughs> He's just like, oh yeah, that's awesome. Didn't say anything. Just walked away. Wow, <laughs> what a missed opportunity. I know. But he deserves it for being a total moron. I agree. <laughs> I, I if you I, love something enough to get it tattooed on your skin, yeah. you should probably know who the actor was. Damn that right. Person. Damn right. I agree hundred wow. percent. Yeah. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, that pretty much wraps up the show for another week. Hold That's on. it. No, hold on. What about the IMDb game where we uh, think of amazing movie titles and and then come up with an IMDb rating that you would it would have to be for you to watch the fictional yeah, title? Yeah. What about that? I don't have any. What? I do. I did. I did it's unacceptable. Do I didn't have any titles? Can't that be it. It's okay. What? Because I came prepared. You have some. Yeah. Wow. Hey, hey. The girl <laughs> speaks up. Here we go. The girl is more than a girl. She's a woman. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean it in that way. I've just yeah. got some. I've got some titles. Okay. And just... some, you know, potential stars. I'm excited. This okay. sounds like a bit of fun. Yeah. Well, hopefully. Here we go. <laughs> All right. How many stars would this need for you to go and see it? All right. It's called Whiskey in the Hills. <laughs> Starring Meryl Streep. Um, it seems like it's, it would be it would be like a early nineties flick. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. too popular. Probably straight to DVD. Uh, it'd have to be at least seven point nine for me to consider it. I don't think Meryl Streep does like uh, straight to DVD. I think it would be like a really artsy piece where, mm. like you know, her father was an alcoholic and she's coming to terms with her fucking whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, something... Uh, I wouldn't watch it at all. Unless it was like an 8.7, maybe an 8.8, eight, eight I would watch. Fair enough. The hills are alive with the sound of Dream Bowie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Alright. Um, next one. Doctor Who, the musical. Oh, man, Ooh, starring Tobey Maguire. Oh, well, really? he makes better. Is he the Doctor? No, he's just an extra. Oh. No, it's starring him. <laughs> oh, you did mention that. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, paying um, attention. You know what? I'll leave this one for you. I wouldn't see it. I love Doctor Who, and Tobey Maguire's all right, I, I guess. Nah. I'd probably watch it at around a 7.5. Okay. That being said, I fucking hate musicals. What am I saying? So I, I would have to be a You're nine. locked in. No, yeah, locked in. your answer's locked in. <laughs> First answer is the answer I take. Oh, oh shit. shit. What's the next one? The next one is called A Foot Out the Door, a memoir. <laughs> yeah. Starring oh. Ray Romano. Oh, oh my lord. You know what would be better if he was directing it as well? <laughs> directing and starring. <laughs> and written by. Um, I. Uh, Ray does a lot of the whole. Eh, eh, he does that. <laughs> he's got the weird voice. He's nasal. Yeah, he's very nasally. Yeah. Oh, oh. He makes me... I, I'm not a fan. <laughs> he makes you groan. He makes me groan. It'd yeah. have to be in the top 100 IMDb for me. Yeah, actually. yeah. It would have to be ridiculously high. Or, the only other thing that can make me watch it is if he died brutally in it. Like, I'm talking about, <laughs> like, spiked through the eyeball socket yeah. or something like that. You know, like, just brutally got murdered in it. I, w- I would watch <laughs> it that. It seems really hard for someone who, like, brought us... A really, really popular sitcom. <laughs> yeah, true. True. Make him. Yeah, yeah, evidently everybody doesn't love Freeman. <laughs> oh! Hey, <laughs> oh! And finally, The Pillow Fort Dilemma with Frankie Muniz and Justin JT Timberlake. Ooh, Very okay. good. Is the credit actually say Justin JT Timberlake? Yeah, I think it does. It does, yeah. yeah. I just read it right off IMDb. So oh yeah. my <laughs> lord. This movie is going to be a gem, I promise you that. Yeah. Frankie Muniz probably coming straight out of Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. Off the back of that other film that he did where the guy jumps in the pool and turns blue. I forget that movie. What kind of oh, talking I know about? It's Cody something. Cody Banks, that's the one. <laughs> Wow. Why do it's I probably comes straight yeah. off the back of that. Who decides, good. you know what, I want people to take me seriously as an actor. Yep. What's it called? The Pillow Fort Dilemma, so good luck there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's pretty fucked. Yeah, it's got to be at least an A for me. You know what, I... I uh, yeah. Okay, who was the other actor, JT? Yeah, it's a sci-fi thriller. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. I, I'm picturing it like they go inside a pillow fort and it's got like this Narnia style like window into some other planet or something. Yeah, that'd be sick. Mm. There's like little fucking fawns running around trying to do stuff. That was the plot I'd watch it as sick. Like yeah, that. yeah. 
I know we've we've had a lot of uh, talks about this in the past, but I know Vader, you have a bit of a hard on for JT. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, we've discussed it before. I think he can deliver a good performance on occasion, mm-hmm. uh, but you see, yeah, with just... sync. Yeah, yeah, or or um, <laughs> I'm doing more he's like uh, movie you know, acting stuff. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay, guys, that brings it to a close. It's been another episode of Haircut and the Beard. You can reach us on Twitter at Haircut Beard. You can email us Haircut and the Beard at gmail.com or jump on our website Haircut and the Beard com. You can find a variety of other social media outlets to contact us with. I think it's very important to mention. Don't just type into Google Haircut and Beard. Because you will get a lot of pictures of guys with beards. Unless that's what you're after, in which case it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. it's a personal choice. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. You just send us ideas about IMDb movie rating game. I'd like to thank our special guest, the girl, for joining us today. And uh, of course, my luxuriously bearded co host, Rob. That was an absolute pleasure, as always. My name is Bade, aka Haircut. Good night, all. Thank you.